Welcome to Windows on the World. We're live from Glastonbury. I have with me Sandy Adams and Piers Corbin. We did some talks here yesterday in the afternoon. It was a great success and it went on into the evening. A lot of people came to see us and thanks to everyone who came as a result of listening to us on the Richie Allen show. I was on Richie's show last week and quite a few people turned up so thanks Richie and I look forward to being on Richie's show again very soon. We've actually had a very interesting day and evening down here in Glastonbury. We've been talking to a lot of people and what's interesting is that people do now seem to be waking up to this global action plan implemented at a local level. Our talks were called The Bigger Picture and that's what we cover on the show. First of all, I want to talk about a a separate issue, which is an interview that's going out tomorrow night on windowsontheworld.net. And it's an interview with a chap from Wolverhampton called Raj Mahay, who needs 100,000 signatures to get his mother's death debated and hopefully investigated after a 30-year miscarriage of justice by West Midlands police. His mother, Kishni McKay, was killed after being hit by a police car on a pedestrian crossing at high speed. Uh, The police car was not um, displaying any signs of being in at high speed. In other words, it didn't have a siren. And Kishni McKay was knocked about 40 feet across the pavement and the police failed to investigate the incident adequately. That's a slight understatement, really. And you'll hear about that tomorrow. It was implied that um, Kishni McKay had a long-term drink problem, which was not the case. This is very disturbing, and I can resonate with it because of what's happened to me over the past couple of years with miscarriages of justice and the police basically railroading people. Well, that's a nice way of putting it, I suppose. A full interview with Raj will be aired at 8 p.m. here on windowsontheworld.net. That's tomorrow, the 18th of June, 8 p.m. So please tune in to that and sign the petition which is on the front page of Windows on the World. So getting back to what we were talking about yesterday, the bigger picture, we've now got ourselves into a position where we've got the three of us doing talks. We've got Sandy Adams talking about Agenda 21, how it's implemented. If you don't know what that is, listen to our other shows and also just take a look for yourself. It's a global action plan implemented at a local level. And that local level is where we're actually finding that people are waking up because they're starting to realize that they've got no input as to what's going on. And there's a psychological control which is being exerted over the narrative. And this goes into really what we talked about yesterday. My talk really is also about the the way that we are being re-engineered and the fake paradigm that we're being put into. But first of all, let's just talk about biometrics. The biometrics regulator stated that facial recognition in 98% of cases is wrong. This was an experiment done by South Wales Police. The Met Police also state that they delete images after 30 days. Now, this experiment was taken place at a football match, and it was a surveillance experiment. And just listen to that again. Facial recognition was wrong in 98% of the cases. So this is very, very serious. This whole surveillance agenda is something we go into a lot. And when you actually think about it and indeed look into it, what you're going to find is that data gathering is a massive industry. And that industry is in private hands. We've talked about this a lot. That was one of the things I talked about yesterday. ESRI, a data mapping company, in partnership with Crime Stoppers. Now, we all know about Crime Stoppers. Well, people who have listened to Windows on the World will know about Crime Stoppers. I got the whole of Kent Crime Stoppers taken down. That's around 480 people removed overnight because of the abuse of process by Kent Police. And I will say it's an abuse of process because it is that this can actually happen. Now, when we start looking into this surveillance agenda, it all seems to add up with what's being put into the public at every single level. We've covered how your local council even is using pictures of the public 
that they are not indemnified to even put up onto public facing websites. This was pointed out a few weeks ago and we had the council website in Waltham Forest taken down and this person's picture removed. This is a huge invasion of privacy. That's an understatement. This is surveillance on a massive scale. And one of the things I was talking about yesterday was the way that things are out of the hands of the public now. And what we're finding is that there's no remedy in anything. Everything is full of gatekeepers. Doesn't matter whether it's the police, the council, or any other organization, all you get is sent round in a circle and anyone who's listened to this show will have heard the phone calls I've made, things like the Independent Office of Police Conduct, which will not actually investigate the police. What's interesting about this is we have to look at these high profile cases that have been over the years where the police have actually been investigated. What are those cases being put into the public for? It appears now after a lot of research that what they're doing is they're putting these cases into the public because they want them there because they actually are part of the social engineering and the divide and rule strategy which is actually coming out of the intelligence services that may sound like an assumption but i've done a lot of research on this and we find that the intelligence services are at the top of these think tanks like demos this is another thing i was talking about yesterday that demos were talking about open infiltration and direct action and direct action is something that people who listen to this show will know all about because I've described it in great detail. Agitation groups being set up. We all know about Soros, Black Lives Matter, Antifa and all the rest of it. But these agitation groups are not just these big groups. These agitation groups can be put into your local community. We've been talking about this quite a lot. I'm going to introduce Piers Corbyn now and Sandy Adams. But first of all, yes, we'll um, just check that we're back online again. We are, that's fine. So, Sandy... You did talk about Agenda 21, didn't you? So I did. <laughs> tell us a bit about your talk. Well, it, it, um, I started off with an overview of, of how I got involved in Agenda 21, how I, how I, um, how I, I began to realise what it was, because I'd, I'd come from a background where I was into transition towns. I'd set up transition town Nunhead and Peckham. I'd been years ago. I was in the Ecology Party, which morphed into the Green Party. And I suddenly realised, you know, um, when I came to Somerset and the flooding happened, and uh, I just went into this, uh, I just on, on, on the talk I went into the whole thing of how I went down to help at Borough Bridge um, with the sandbagging and realised there was something horribly wrong because uh, there was no government agencies actually helping with the flooding uh, crisis down there. And the only people that were there were the locals and the local landlord had, had taken over the pub as a sort of um, a kind of operations centre of rescue um, and uh, he was amazing, Jim at the King Alfred in Borough Bridge and, and the, there was no help apart from an amazing um, uh, Sikh organisation called Kali, I think they were called Kalisa um, who were, who'd flown in from Haiti to actually help us on the Somerset levels which to me seemed ridiculous um, and there was just no the environment agency had gone to ground. There was no there was no um, help from the army, the navy, or anyone. And when they did finally arrive, um, it was just uh, photo opportunities. By that time, all the all the um, TV companies were there. The Sky News was there, and the BBC. And they did literally photo opportunities with the with the with the army. They turned up for for say half an hour, did a bit of sandbagging, and left. And I just thought there's something really wrong here. So I went into it and I found out that actually um, uh, in policy six of the environmental agencies, um, uh, biodiversity, sustainable development um, uh, agenda was a policy to actually flood those areas that were flooded um, and allow, well not flood them, but allow them to flood. Um, to save Taunton and Bridgewater, but more than anything, to to just run run the run the infrastructure down, uh, not not to clear the reams and not to uh, not to deal with the pumping stage. There was a problem with a, an old di disused factory on the on the levels, which had was it was using a lot of water in, in uh, up until nineteen, I think it was uh, two thousand and eight actually. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it was decommissioned in 2008. And, and they didn't bother to, to do anything about the, the water table because it was using a lot of water. Anyway, long story short, I, I found out that, that um, it was all down to uh, sustainable development uh, that was the reason why um, they, they, it had all been neglected and the Environment Agency were continuing with these policies to put wildlife over, over the, the, the livelihoods of people in business and people's livelihoods of living and they lost their homes and it was all down to uh, preserving uh, wildlife which was ridiculous and they also did a, a strange thing where they, they, they started um, uh, catching all the, all the uh, otters from the, from the river once right. they actually got it all going they, 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 captured, they had spent a long time capturing all the otters uh, which seemed a, a huge waste of time. Well, they put they put them in a, a sanctuary until the uh, rivers had d- uh, till the water levels had gone down. Okay. Because they were worried they were going to drown, but they didn't seem to care about the people. It was most no, peculiar. No. So they were trying to replace this yes. area because yeah. it's reclaimed land. So they yeah. were trying to unreclaim to it. unreclaim it. Yes, mm. and and farmers lost uh, lost their cattle. Well, they had to take the cattle away, mm. and the cattle. Some of the farmers haven't brought the cattle back. And I know a lot of farms have, have suffered over this, and certainly people have lost their homes. They're, they're uninsured, they're uninsurable. And that area is still um, not very, you know, people can't sell their houses. It's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a... Well, this rewilding thing is very interesting yeah. because yeah. under the UN, everything has the same rights. This is this agenda we're talking about. So in other words, a pile of rocks is a community. And this is used as an excuse to get people off the land. Mm. What we're talking about here is actually a land grab. Mm. And I make this comparison in my talk that it's the biggest land grab since the papal bull Unan Sanctum in 1302, which actually was the biggest claim on world property. And it stated that there was no salvation outside the universal church. Now, it's interesting that the UN and UNESCO states that no one will be left behind, which is a kind of inverse way of saying the same thing. We, we so, won't let you be left that's behind. That's right, that you, no one will be and left behind be because yeah. you're not going to be allowed, allowed to be outside this paradigm. Absolutely, yeah. So it's based on intolerance. Yeah. So when they say diversity and sustainability, we have to look at what they're actually saying. Mm. So in other words, we've now got these banks and NGOs and corporations running government policy and that's a lot of what we talked about yesterday because I couldn't work out how this would be implemented so quickly in places like Waltham Forest where I used to live. In other words the whole infrastructure changes within three years with no planning consultation whatsoever. Mm. General Konstantin Petrov stated that the results of the Rio Earth Summit was that nothing happened. So in 2002, the heads of multinational corporations and banks got together and said, we will look after the infrastructure that affects the well-being of all people. So basically, we've got a corporate takeover. Yeah. And it is a bit like Un and Sanctum in the respect that what they're imposing is a religion. This is a religious idea. It it's not actually anything to do with sustainable development which would which sounds like a loose term it's actually being promoted as a religion and indeed was from the early 70s when people like Robert Mueller got involved with the new age movement and co-opted a lot of Hindu cults into yeah. this idea of biodiversity and I saw the results of that with one um, Hindu sect that I was involved with and very well-meaning people getting sucked into it and indeed um, actually giving their property away yeah. to this organization property, and yeah. and basically it's about using this idea of um, well you can't take it with you and it's a spiritual journey <laughs> and all the rest of it but we'll have it yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, so you can be us. spiritual yeah. and we'll have the property yeah 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 and yeah we'll help you along your yeah. your your life because we're more spiritual than you so we can give you the spirituality you give us the property that's exactly, yeah. and, the, and what this is about is the destruction of property rights and people will say well pr- well, maybe that's a good thing but you have to think about it like this, property rights are basically very important because <laughs> when we talk about this stuff we have to look at what inalienable rights are, the right to hold property. Now if you do not hold property you 
cannot be properly represented you can't represent yourself prop you have to you have to be a holder of property whether that property is the idea that you know what you are in a court of law or whether it's about property because all transactions in court are transactions of property mm, really? so okay. yes yeah. absolutely we've got yeah. aria here and she's going to ask some so, questions yeah so, so even your individual self could be seen as a property absolutely as obviously yes. you know you're you know uh, uh, law, yeah. and mm. uh, um i know that there's the whole birth certificate um issue that uh, kind of enslaves us as property and yeah. uh mm. and well invariably as a as a number that's right yes it's floated you see the thing is this these are concepts and they're hard for a lot of people to understand but basically the registration of something gives away a title a registration is basically putting something onto a register or a roll and when an estate is on a register or a roll that's property so the property uh, for instance if you own a property you'd never own the actual property you own the title to the property so this house is mm -hmm. not owned by anybody I only own the title yes. deeds you own the title deeds similar deed. to the car as well yes that that's right cars, yeah. Yeah, right okay that's why the DVLA, yeah. when you sign the V5 document for your car, you are, give, you are actually having right of use <coughs> of the car. Mm -hmm. They own it, but they've given you right of use under their conditions, which is why when you don't pay your car tax, mm. they can take it away. Because yeah. if it was yours, yeah. they wouldn't be able to exactly. take it away. You're, you're that would just be a lien on yeah. your property. The tax would be a lien. But because you filled in that form, that means that you have given the property to them mm. you are just a holder of a title oh the dvla hands the car over to them yes the v5 oh. is a document can, that can transfers the title ask, yeah how do you think that um over time um these uh, legislation i mean we apparently live in a so-called democracy no, maybe don't, don't. don't. <laughs> um but uh, these uh, legislations are just passed you know uh, underneath our, our very noses as we as we sleep um, how's that come to be that well, we're just sleeping whilst these legislation are passing through? Most people are interested and they don't partake. So there's an old Roman maxim that states ignorance of the law is no excuse. Mm -hmm. So in other words, mm -hmm. if they don't tell you, it doesn't mean they have to. It means that you have to find out. For instance, when you go and see a judge on Queen's Bench, um, if you've got a situation where you need a remedy, basically you go in for a remedy if you don't know what you want they can't give it to you so you have to know implicitly what you want because when you go in they say yes what can I do for you and if you can't explain what they they can do for you then you're wasting their time so you need to have the right the correct linguistics and lexicon that's right. and have a you know total complete yeah. understanding that's right to Absolutely. even begin to, that's to, to right and that's why right. people don't understand the situation because they'll they'll argue in court but they won't be saying the right things so it doesn't matter what you say and you see this happening in court cases when mm. people are losing they start throwing things in which are totally irrelevant and the judge has already made his mind up yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is there's also um, the assumption through the administration the administrative courts from the 1200s and I talked about this yesterday were using what they call admiralty law and people say oh admiralty law that's some kind of conspiracy theory that people think no <laughs> it's actually uh, it's, it's actually a uh, a type of law the admiralty law if you look it up is a type of law but it, it's about commerce and it's about the sea so they brought admiralty law onto the land and in the 1200s lawyers were very very concerned about this because they were entering common pleas and saying look you can't do this the, you're going to the court of common pleas about this that's where the people go and they say you can't be conveying people as property like this as though they're commodities that have come off a ship mm -hmm. and of course the birth certificate it's all admiralty stuff so the birth certificate comes from the birth and it's what's on a ship the ship's got births and um, basically when you go into a court you go into a dock and the the property yeah. has to go into the dock so when the judge asks you to go into the dock it, it's basically a request now if you go in you, you're under the jurisdiction of the court so in other words when you go into a court and they say all oh, rise if you don't rise they haven't got the jurisdiction so they have to leave the bench and they have to come back again and say all oh, rise and if you don't after the third time they're meant to leave the bench and not come back however in administrative courts they don't like that they just now call a security and they come in with tasers yeah. and start threatening you mm -hmm. well that's a different thing but the, the whole idea yeah well we can't, <laughs> if we can't use the law we'll have to use another way won't we you know Mm. So this is all maritime law, and can I ask, 
how did it come that we can you kind of you know you know we're, we we live on um uh you know we're, we're terrain beings but this law comes from the sea how did that even come about well that's because um it's it's an easy way of making people property you see we're talking about transfer of property when you go into courts usually an argument is about putting up one piece of property uh, against another now in all in order to be able to be traded um and and it's kind of used as commodities we had to be incorporated into a fictional area of law and they call it a legal fiction and every lawyer knows a legal fiction is just something that can be put down on paper that represents a commodity which can be conveyed so in other words the problem is if you go into court and you've got a lawyer it's the lawyer that signs you into prison they sign you to the crown because the lawyer works for the crown they work on behalf of the crown I said this to a lawyer and he said yes that's right uh, but the thing is, if you go in unrepresented, you're an imbecile, and an imbecile is not competent. So what you have to do is prove that you're competent. You have to go into court and prove that you have competence. And if you don't have competence, they will act for you, and they will give you the benefit of that court, which could be a fine or prison. Those are the benefits of the state, because basically when your parents gave you to the state, you accepted the benefit privileges of the state, which is taxation, dole, pension and imprisonment and fines. These are all benefits, it's benefits. It goes back again to the universal church and the Roman law, it's benefits. They're giving you benefits. This is why we talked about yesterday, you've got a P on your passport and it means pauper. Now people go, I'm not a pauper, <laughs> I'm not a pauper, I pay my taxes. Oh, you're a pauper then, because only paupers pay taxes. Mm. I think you'll find that people who aren't paupers on this planet do not pay not taxes. Pay taxes yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but this is the problem, really, is because none of us really know. I mean, I know that there's been a huge movement within the free man movement and uh, people wanting to educate themselves insofar as uh, how to actually stand up for themselves because now the law uh, is really restricting, you know, it's strangling us and we can feel it as a collective. Um, but invariably, none of us have been taught how to hold our own uh, when we get, you know, uh, reprimanded without even sometimes even a, a, a justifiable, um, you know, uh, cause. Um, and we don't know how to hold our own on court or even in front of a policeman. Well, they don't teach you it at school for a very good reason well, because you don't need to be taught. I mean, the thing is with this stuff, yeah. It, how best to educate ourselves is one of my questions. Well you have to do it yourself because nobody's going to do it for you and that's the thing I didn't learn anything in school it was a complete waste of time I wasted 16 <laughs> years of my life which I could have been doing something much more useful with. well you learned to read didn't you I learned to read Sorry. yeah but I, I learned to read by the time I was about 8 didn't I? Yeah. 7 or something I mean I can't even remember now it was a long time ago but the point again. is that the it, it was of no use whatsoever the stuff I learned there was not practically useful to me Mm. You know, I mean, it's the way things are presented, and I'm much more about history now than I ever le would have possibly learned at school because of the way it's presented. It's almost like things are presented as we know in this compartmentalized fashion. And unless you have the bigger picture, which is the title of our talks, <laughs> then you will never understand things because everything's going to be in different boxes. And the reason they call it joined up thinking is so you can see around the whole thing and see where it fits together. So in other words, if you've just got this linear idea of things and it's very absolute, that works for a lot of people because the education system plays into that. That gives them what they want because most people don't want to go outside their own experience. They don't like it. And the thing is that you have to go outside your experience to understand anything. The, the, the biggest upheavals I've had in my life have taught me the most. However, that doesn't mean I'd want to go through them again and I'm still going through some of them now. But the point is this that most people don't know how anything works on this planet. They've got no idea. They've, they've been given, um, basically, a very childlike view of the world, and they accept that as reality, and it's not reality. And I talk about this in, in my um, show, which I, really I, I want to get people booking us out there. So if you want to book the bigger picture, just email through the site. Um, myself, Sandy and Piers would like to do talks because what we're finding is that more and more people are waking up to the idea that the, this, this centralised control is much bigger than they realised. It's not that locally the people that are meant to represent them do not represent them and cannot represent them. This is a big part of what it's about and my talk, talk starts off with the idea that we've got basically a priest class at the top the initiates 
and then they put the public between two lies usually they just create a lie split it into two and they let the public argue over it extreme left extreme right um, atheism over organized religion it doesn't really matter these are just things that are set up as distractions because at the top level none of this matters it's nonsense when you get to the the sort of pinnacle of understanding none of this stuff matters and I'm not talking about sort of people who think they're enlightened I'm talking about people who actually know how things work and it's a very different thing and to get that across is very very difficult because what we've done we, we, what's happened is we've fed things into our egos and people and, and basically the unelected media and the social engineers pander to people's egos all the time because that's where the weakness is in other words egotism is weakness because if you're going around very egotistical and think you know a lot then you are absolutely outside reality because nobody really knows a lot of what's going on we all have a, we all have fragments of it and it's when you start putting the fragments together that starts making sense but that free man thing to get back to your point is really interesting because that actually opens your eyes up to how the state sees you so if if, if people go oh, uh, you know, uh, my elderly mother was killed in hospital. They don't understand why. Mm. It's because she's not necessary anymore. And they go, oh, we don't live in that sort of society. Well, I'm afraid we, we do. do. It's practical, right? You have to think like these people are thinking. And when I say these people, I'm, I'm, talk I'm not talking of even about people like Bill Gates and Branson, these billionaires. There's, there, there is a hierarchy above these people. And the thing is that you have to be able to go, well, is it working and to, for most people on the planet it does work but when you get the situation we're in now where you've got this UN global action plan implemented at a local level and it's it's being put over as though it's a, a papal bull which basically it, it is, is it is because the, the yeah. Pope has endorsed agenda 2030 I mean he, he's, he's yeah. actually one of the one of the um, the UN's ambassadors to bring it bring it you know in to bring the the, the, the 17 goals of Agenda 2030 to fruition. So, you know, and they held a big ceremony in Rome when it was in 2015, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, with you know, and all the, the leaders, <coughs> you know, the UN leaders flew in to Rome and they had a whole ceremony to usher in Agenda 2030. So it is. It's a, it's a Roman. It's a Roman. Well, Roman these people also people. believe in magic to a certain degree yeah, because do. when the Pope was on that balcony and he released those those two birds. Um, and they both died. That meant a lot to them. Right? <laughs> Basically, what happened was well, they, they released a, they released a dove, okay. Okay. and a, um, dove. A, a seagull came along and just and just ripped it to pieces in front of the crowd. And dove is the essence of purity. Well, exactly. Innocence. But it was released by the essence of impurity, which mm. is them. Yeah. So that that would mean a lot to the mm. high ups in, within the, within that church because I think was this well, televised. Yeah, it was, it was in Rome. You can you can oh, see it. Okay. It's um, it's on YouTube. Did they release another dub to make up? Oh yeah. Well, oh, was that at the ceremony for for twenty thirty then? Which it was. I think it was around twenty fifteen. But 20, um, sorry, I, I did actually report on it at the time, and oh, a friend of mine yeah, in Australia really said, "Yeah, they're, they're freaking out about this stuff." Well, because if you believe in magic, this bodes well for hmm. people opposing agenda. I mean, we're, we're having this discussion from Glastonbury, which is you know um, spiritual centre, one of the spiritual centres in the UK at least. And um, you know it's interesting in the spiritual community. Uh, you know I really, I really, um, I actually really pray that we, you know we can kind of uh, come together um, and unify and fuse our. You know we have a lot of circles, medicine circles, or you know vajan circles of various different modalities, or you know festivals, side trance, uni communities, so on and so forth, raw food communities. And it's, um, you know, and we all kind of have a well-wishing and we might have our own private, you know, ceremony and prayer, which is kind of like the magical aspect. Um, and, um, you know, like, for example, in the World War, uh, I'm aware that, you know, the government called upon witches to use a cone of power. So, you know, there's this kind of like anarchist witches that I'm personally wanting to, to, to bring about, which is using <laughs> okay. the intention. Oh, I'm getting into a little bit sounds of good fun. I'm, getting, sounds I'm really. getting into a little bit of metaphysics here, but you know, this is my personal belief system is um and you know, I used to be more of, you know, quite an activist when I was, you know, in my teens, um, you know, full full activist. And then for me I changed, I switched blade because in my own personal belief, um, I just uh, I just kind of surmised that 
first you have to change the ideology and the consciousness itself that precedes the action so you know and and now i've kind of come you know full 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 circle where i really just want those two a seeming uh, dichotomous, um, you know, realities of the spiritual, um, you know, aspects that perhaps just give, you know, well-meaning prayers or mantras or chants, and actually to really um, inspire this, you know, the, the the spiritual collective to take action as well. Well, this is the mm. thing. I mean, mm. the the, uh, the the trouble is with a lot of these movements is they're hugely co-opted from the start, and. I, I've always said that individual collectivism is the best way because if you act individually but with a, collect, with a collective aim, it's much better than a group mm -hmm. getting together or, or because groups possible. are always infiltrated and always yeah. taken over. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the problem because, I mean, we were talking about this earlier, Aria, about um, festivals. I mean, I love doing festivals, but me and Piers have been basically kicked out of the Green Gathering <laughs> for telling the truth <laughs> about what's happening. I know yeah. the truth about what's happening, but this Love is the him. thing, you see. I know, but... We were too good for them, you know. Mm. And actually, well, lots of the festivals are actually, uh, they, they've, they've been controlled by, uh, is it Festival 2020? Which yeah, is, it's called Festival 2025. 2025 and what they do is they, they, they put these people up yeah. there who are very corporate, but, hey man, I, I used to be a rock star, I've got long hair, man, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they put these people up and they're just totally corporate stooges for this uh, fake sustainability. And it's now being implanted. It's always implanted as a religion. The mm -hmm. idea of the environmental movement was it, it's a religion. And the people who originally um, enforced it believed it to be a religion. religion. People like um, David Suzuki and Stephen Schneider, we've done mm -hmm. shows on this with real experts who know all about this stuff. There's a, a chap in America who actually made a comment on our video the other week, Gary Arnold from Freedom Advocates, he's been looking at this stuff since the 60s. Mm. This is social engineering. I mean, you, people think they live in a kind of fairly free situation, but they don't. When you go to these places, they are micromanaged, and that's the problem. So, in other words, I think you have to go outside it now, and I see that What's going to happen is people are going to get fed up with this uniform kind of enforcement that's going on with this Agenda 21 and try and get together outside it. However, all of this has been factored in because they want everyone living in cities. They want, they've want they got 50% of the world's population living in cities now. By 2050, they want 70% of the whole planet living in cities. The reason for that is about control of population, absolute police state control of population. And people go, well, why would they want to do that? Well. Why wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obvious, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the obvious aim because the, the the idea of all this came out of this overpopulation idea. So they're constantly telling people there's too many people on the planet. But the point is that where, by enforcing it in this way, they are dictating your future. Now, I don't want anybody dictating my future. I like going around, driving around in my camper van, parking up where I can. It's hard enough way to do it now. <laughs> but it's yeah. going to get a lot worse under this because the whole idea of it has been sold as an environmental thing, but it's actually draconian. And it, at the end of it, really, it's all about population reduction and control. It's, a, it's control of the population and surveillance mm. and data harvesting and... And I, I did talk about this in 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 the talk yesterday. Mm. But um, you know, smart cities. And that'll be on the video. Then, yeah, well. smart cities are a reality, and we are. You know, that Bristol is is going to be the smart city flagship of Europe. Really? And, you know, and we. You know, it's mm. it's going to be. You know, they're testing driverless cars. Would you say Bristol? I mean, Bristol's Bristol. local. Sorry to interrupt Bristol, you, because yeah. personally, um, sorry to interrupt That's you, but okay. you know, personally, you know, as a uh, as a kind of youth of Bristol. And I, I lived in Bristol, and you know I squatted in Bristol mm. myself. Um, you know I personally call it the rene the one last standing renegade city. I kind of mm. feels, you know, it has this kind of like mm. a pirate feel to it. Uh, I might be mistaken. That's how it's well, I've always think, seen it. Well, they want to change all that. Yeah, I mean the thing yeah. is, that, Maybe, that's I, don't why think, I don't think many people are aware of the 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 agenda, the, the bigger picture behind the smart city agenda. A lot of people think smart cities are really cool. They yeah, really, they really, yeah. uh, the Bristol people, they are a cool lot. They all think it's all kind of trendy and wonderful that, it, you know, these smart cities are occurring where they'll have really fast broadband, you know, they can download things really quickly. And everything is connected and that, that the Internet of Things is coming in. But the Internet of Things, you know, is a Pandora's box of, of, mm. of hell for, 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 for human beings, actually, because 
the Internet of Things um, and 5G, which I talked about yesterday as well, um, is, is heralding a, a technocracy, a technology that is really not for human beings, it's for machines. And, and, and that's, the, that's the worrying thing, is that it's actually an AI agenda, it's yeah. artificial intelligence, and it's uh, mostly about surveillance, data harvesting, keeping people, people in, in densely populated urban areas away from the countryside, and that's the whole thing about Agenda 21, is to get people out of the countryside and into urban areas, and being surveilled and controlled. So the thing is, Aria, what, it's, it's the opposite of yes. what you actually want to do. Yeah. That's the thing. But it's, it, everything's presented as a benefit, you see. Of course. So, yeah. th so if, if you want yes, someone to do something, absolutely. you're not going to tell them what it is. They yeah. say, this is going to be really good for you yeah, because of that. And, yeah. and it goes down to the consensus reality of like, would you like a, a red one or a blue one? So I want a green one. No one's going to be left no, behind. No, you're not going to no, have no, a green no, one. No, Sorry. No, you've, no, got, yeah. you've got to have a no red choice. one or a blue one. No yeah, and that's the way it goes. Yeah. And... We see that, we, we talk about Delphi technique, which is a huge part of this control locally, where you've got a facilitator and a co-facilitator, they control the narrative, they give limited choices, you've got PR companies who then have been going out into the community to find the people who they're, who they're going to be on their side, they're going to be the ones they use in the local newspapers, mm -hmm. and it's just actors. I mean, this makes sense if you want to control things. I mean, if you want to, if, if, like working in television or something, the last thing you ever want is a member of the public off the street. You want mm. someone who knows what they're doing with a script, right? And that's just the way television works because television is all about fakery, yeah. right? It's, yeah. it's not about the truth. It's about what appears to be true to people, which are two different things. And once you learn about television training, for instance, that's, that's a, v a very big part of it because most people are completely television trained. This is why you get things like these terror stories coming on and people don't analyse them, you're getting fragmented bits of information which don't make sense, you're not getting a full story, you're not getting them, um, well at 7.35 a car drove into here, we were on the scene 7.48 and we saw this and there's a mark in the wall here, this is where, you don't get this, you don't get a construction of what's happened, you get um, a PR statement from the police, well it has all the hallmarks of ISIS or something like this, you know, and, and you, you don't actually get the story. So, and this is a huge part of what we talk about, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. And it's all they present a narrative on. Yeah, they present a narrative from away. the security services, mm -hmm. which goes into these think tanks. And basically, people, when you mention things, oh, I suppose it's all the Tavistock Institute and stuff like that. Well, yes, and I, I read the documents like from the British Psychological Association. Um, how to live beyond a post-truth world and psychology has got no basis in reality the sort of psychology that they're talking about Freudian psychology because once you look into where, what this was about and the way it went into the Frankfurt School as it was called then um, the Institute of Social Studies as it became and uh, you'll see that the, this whole thing is about draconian control of population and minds and the whole thing about war on a mind is psychological warfare is the most important thing look at that idea of you got that vlad the impaler right you go oh i don't want to go war against him i'll end up stuck on a pole <laughs> I mean, the, uh, this this kind of this kind of thing is the thing the army used all the time right the, there's, a, there's a fellow who's got a private company who does who does basically psychological operations on the public for a living and he makes these videos for the army about what's the, this this one called not another brother and it's it, to me it's just corny it's like some but maybe does this stuff does work on people i don't know but basically what they're, what they're doing is they're using that same mentality because basically the fear of something is much worse than the thing Emotional itself. Emotional triggers, yeah. Well, it's worse than that because it, it's, it's like what they're doing is they're, they're introducing the fear of something. The fear is much worse than the thing itself. Mm. So if you're in a really dangerous situation, you don't really get scared. But if you know a dangerous situation's coming, then you do get scared. Yeah, you, that, yeah. that, so basically, it's the fight or flight mechanism. They're just playing with the basic way that people react in a, in a very kind Which of... Which toxifies our whole system, our whole biosystem. Well, that's right. And the thing is, with this stuff, it's quite interesting that, that things like post-traumatic stress disorder is when... The, the, the stress can't leave and it becomes it in your body yeah, yeah, and, the, and these, yeah, yeah. these, these um, there's a lot of people who get this sort of thing you well a lot of soldiers get it a lot of people who've been in any prolonged kind of um, psychological battle you, you can get these, these sort of things happening so basically what, what the, with psychology when you give these little 
when you give these little traumas continuously, the public are in a constant state of fear, um, and and it's very easy to do. And the, there's this other side of it. It's also promoted like, oh yeah, but if, if if you don't engage with it, it won't hurt you, which is which is absolutely the opposite of what you should be thinking. You you've got to think like, <laughs> okay, I deal with that. It's going to hurt you anyway. See, obviously. It's gonna, yes, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. point. So mm. there's there's yeah, there's nothing more helpless than somebody who's got this cognitive dissonance that that I'm removed from it because when it actually does hit you it's much worse it's classic horse yeah, spiritual yeah. bypassing mm. spiritual yeah. bypassing yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I think most, one of the most important things is that well in my talk I started off by saying things are not what they seem and this was about physics but you see this also applies completely mm. in uh, you know uh, events happening upon people in communities uh, and so yeah. forth and what happened to Sandy's uh, experience is very interesting because you see she started out doing work to you know in transition towns and, and so forth and then she realized that actually the state was not doing what they would be they should be doing and that actually the purpose of the ap activity of the state there was not what it should be i.e. it was unaccountable and undemocratic so now Sandy's come to realize well okay so that means we have to you know take actions ourselves but then Aria interestingly saying well she was into doing lots of actions but now realizes that to an extent consciousness precedes action so she wants to mm. change consciousness which is what a lot of people in Glastonbury do now uh, but then they do opt out of action. Now, I, I, my feeling about it is that by doing actions, you actually gain consciousness about how things work. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And, yeah. and it moves moves forward. Mm -hmm. But when you reach a certain state of understanding, which you know, a certain number of people have, then we put forward this stuff, and everybody says, "Oh, but that's a conspiracy theory," and uh, you know, uh, and it does sound like that. But I think people listening should understand that. There are definitely books from the United Nations and the European Union and whatever stating what they want to achieve. Now, so it is real, it's not a conspiracy theory, but um, when it comes to local authority, if you start saying, oh, the council is doing this because of Agenda 21, people again, they don't, they don't want to believe it's come from above. Now, in a way, of course, it hasn't entirely come from above, because you have to ask yourself, all right, the council is giving choices about whether there's going to be a bypass in, in, in Glastonbury or whether this housing estate is going to be knocked down or, or not. Okay, now they are offering choices uh, and they have a preferred option and they'll do their best to get their option out. But the question has to be, well, okay, where did the choices they're offering come from? And the answer is, you know, it, it is various advisory processes which which put councils in a certain position. Like, uh, as we said in the discussion, it's no accident that basically almost every council estate in London is at this moment deemed to be in need of regeneration. Now look, some are built in the 50s, some 60s, some 70s. They didn't all, all become about to fall down now. In fact, none of them are about to fall down. But this is a story, a false narrative, used by every council who, who, on the face of it, they're copying each other. And, and they are copying each other. The fact that Agenda 21 or, or uh, the biggest developers in the world are borrowing everywhere isn't necessarily known to people. Um, that's so the there interesting is, thing. There's that's local implementation, I think that's which is we yeah. have to fight at a local mm. level. Whether you're not feeling conscious enough about it or whatever, you, through more mm. fighting you will gain more consciousness and, and understanding to, of how to win and I believe we well can said. but the thing is to in order to fight you have to know who your enemy is yes and at the moment most people don't see no. an enemy they see they, they see something that has been presented as something that's beneficial to 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 the people and it's not it's a lie and I, that's what we've got to see you know we've got you to have, I, but I, you have I, to have I, a specific I, thing yeah, to say to people this means yeah. that you, you well in the case of these social cleansing operations mm. they're telling you you're going to be improved but actually yeah, no 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 the details show you're going to be moved yeah. and you know uh, and, and whatever about I, any particular I would add to that offer. sorry I, I would add to that that 
um, it's so far that some people um, do and are duped by you know the um, you know the, the the lovely candy handed out by the you know the draconian um, uh, well state the bouncy castles yeah. for the children absolutely <laughs> um, I'd actually I'd actually venture to say that you know where I you know the consciousness is shifting and people are becoming more aware but quite freaking frankly because misinformation is just as powerful as information mm. and it's, we've been played that you know it's like wading through if you're if you're looking at a topic and you're going on the internet and suddenly you're on wikipedia and then 17 hours later you're down the rabbit hole you've you know seven you know 22 pages uh, open tabs open well wikipedia is not a very very good my point being is that people do want to make uh, mm. an, uh do inherently want to take action mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. through they're just so exhausted mm -hmm. by trying to discern what yeah. is mm -hmm. it's the, sifting all exactly and so find, that's, find that, that's true. completely true yeah that's completely yeah. true but a lot often it's trolls are in there just to you mm -hmm. know who are deliberately making trouble yeah. well that's another there part are, of the talk they're, 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 Tory party that, numbers have admitted yeah. they got well, yeah, but you've got, of you've got you've got fifteen hundred soldiers on Facebook all the time yeah, yeah. controlling the narrative, and they're using psychological operations against the public. And, and they're and employed by Demos, who, who, who right? Demos, 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 Demos think okay. tank, which takes, which openly admitted that they were in close contact with MI5. They stated the new democracy will work with a combination of government open infiltration and citizen groups taking direct action which goes into contest and the prevent strategy and I've heard from people about that fake direct touch, action you mean? the prevent strategy was set up to identify people who are vulnerable to extremism now what that actually means now is the fake far right which has been introduced by MI5 so in other words they're starting to say now the prevent strategy is a far right extremist now people who question agenda 21 are far right, right. basically it's so <laughs> childish right you couldn't make this up it's like if it's like throwing names yeah. that, no, that have no right. right that's absurd you know it's completely absurd. well this is the point absurd, well, it, yeah. none of it may, has to make any sense no. it's because people hate being called names mm. Yeah. That's all it is, mm -hmm. and and they're not able to yeah. actually rationalise and fight back against mm -hmm. it because this is the way that the Delphi technique works. They use limited insults to shut people down. So they'll, it's like you'll get this with the local council. I've had this with the crime prosecution service. If you ask them a very serious question, they'll say, "Oh, stop shouting at me! I'm going to terminate this conversation." And this is the sort of thing that happened in that council meeting when uh, that stupid yeah, yeah. woman turns around and goes, "Stop shouting at the council!" I said, "Well, they started it. They're shouting at me, and I'm shouting back." But we weren't really even shouting. You know, it was a it was a loud stage whisper, actually. You know, indeed, indeed. But that's the problem. So there you go. Now, the thing is with this, the whole controlling of narrative. People don't realise how big it is because when you look at these social media things I don't go on that Facebook anymore because basically it's just there to get the public to, to get into pointless arguments waste time and then give the, the companies who are gathering the data all of the information mm -hmm. that they need to profile everybody and profiling isn't just about oh finding out what you're building what you do it's about what they're going to sell to you that's more that's more important you know mm -hmm. well everything's being sold to you anyway I mean the whole thing with all of this stuff we talked about yesterday and I've gone into it quite deeply and I suppose that's quite shocking for some people to think that they are being treated um, as lab rats in a, in a psychological operation because when when you actually look at this stuff you've got this uh, ESRI partnered with Crime Stoppers who are a data mapping company and you've got all of these uh, change agent organizations we call them change agents because that's what they are and they're being funded by things like the big lottery and it's all a kind of organizational hierarchy which is put in place with useful idiots heading all these organizations and that's why nothing ever gets done like the big society which came out of David Cameron and Obama which used the Saul Alinsky method now the Saul Alinsky rules for radicals that came out of the 50s early 60s was about community organizing mm -hmm. it's actually about radical subversion because they use yeah. tactics which are beyond psychological warfare in other words they pick a target, freeze it, polarize it, and relentlessly attack it. And 
when you see that in action you realize that nothing works the way the public are told that it works it just doesn't you know that when 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 you see those kind of tactics you realize that okay yeah well it's an all-out kind of assault if you're not going to go along with the paradigm so when we, we do these talks I give examples of that that I've researched and I can pull out the quotes and pull out the documents and they're all there the thing is with this stuff is that people don't look or they don't know where to look yeah. you know that's the thing and, and they'll they find it all too negative but to me the truth's not negative it's just like I'd rather know before I, I leave the planet I want to know what's going on Absolutely. what's the point being if you don't know what's going on <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. anything to add Mr Corbyn before uh, we move on no well I think this you mentioned Saul Alinsky and rules mm. for radicals of course when he started Saul Alinsky did organize some effective mm. actions against car companies about car safety uh, which is good mm. but you see when the super rich um, um, Soros, Obama and so on get hold of his methods then they're used for something entirely different i.e. subversion of, of movements and you see it is an unfortunate fact that some of these direct action things are actually uh, operated by largely by the police I mean the, you know the climate camp was being infiltrated yeah. by, by, by the police and so on but that doesn't mean people shouldn't do direct action it just means they have to be careful and think about what, what they're doing um, uh, everywhere you go there could easily be police spies but I don't want people to get paranoid because it won't help you I mean there may or may not be it doesn't matter but you have to see the goal explain to anyone who can act what they can do and get them to, to join in and I think it's fair to say you know the resistance against various things going on, on now being imposed like uh, social cleansing or or 5G, you know, um, ultra high frequency uh, <coughs> communication systems I, is, you know, gathering a lot of lot of support. So I think the powers that be uh, and the basically the super rich corporations can be defeated. Mm. Um, they can be defeated, and it is hard, but I think they can be, and they are actually losing ground now. Mm. I get the feeling that people can be only be pushed so far into this into yeah. compliance. Yeah. And at some point, they they something triggers, and they go. Actually, mm. this do, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't sound right. Um, enough's enough. And mm. Mm. I'm beginning to see that locally. There's a number of people yeah. that in that meeting yesterday Absolutely. who were obviously like that because yeah. that, there was more active, you know, more support than I expected there. Yeah. And the same yeah. happened when I was speaking at, yeah. at Murphy Rising, where you know, the, which was you know, in, in, in Wales a few weeks ago, where people were clearly seeing through mm, yeah. the false and unfair choices offered. Um, you still have to act on the choices offered, exactly. but it's important to know that actually maybe you could change yeah. the questions and yeah. then the enemy can be defeated. Yeah. I, think I mean, there's a difference for I found from... Sorry, Arya. Mm. Um, there's a difference I found um, just r recently uh, I mean, I've been banging on about Agenda 21 when it was just Agenda 21 before it became Agenda 2030 yep. for the last five years. And and some of the Greens would actually attack me verbally. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now yeah. they're beginning to say, yeah. well, tell us more, which is really, uh, that is a huge step. It is a huge step. No, it is a huge step. step. I mean, as, as we said, yeah. there's a difference between fake green and... And, and, and true and green, green true, which we can uh, we're discussing yeah. in the second half. Because at the end of the day, we all really want to do our bit yeah, to no, to no. you know help the planet no, and make a indeed. better future. No, I, I've seen really yeah. serious deep green people who are really upset when I tell them that man-made climate change is nonsense. But then they realise, hang on, they are they when they see yeah. that that narrative is false and they're taken for a ride, then they can ditch the CO2 stuff and stay on board with yeah. true biodiversity exactly. and defending exactly. defending nature against yeah. all sorts I, of you know, I, I truly yeah. feel that we um, are at poisoning you know. yeah sorry um, yep. I truly feel that we are at a juncture uh, collectively where people as I said you know we we are waking up as a collective and we are making the key questions um, you have to define who's we though that's the thing that well, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge generalisation, but for yeah. me, uh, for example, you know, uh, I mean, I'm in a, a 
you know my circle is generally of a kind of tribe and uh, a spiritual community perhaps you know more kind of like punk or so on and so forth and so you know each each circle has its own kind of you know mm. agenda mm -hmm. and you know things that they're um, you know that that uh, what's terminology um that the group is interested in um, yeah 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 um but what i'm seeing for example you know uh, perhaps i'm in an elevator and there's somebody who's looks totally normal business suit and i you know we start having conversation or oh i'm on a train a tube in london and somebody next to me everybody who and this shows my own judgment mm -hmm. people are waking mm -hmm. up that i didn't usually mm -hmm. would have presumed you know have a presumption when we look mm -hmm. at somebody mm -hmm. um and um you know i do feel that we are at a juncture mm -hmm. where people are waking up they are aware of things but it's now at the point of how the key question now is how do we take action Mm. Well, this is the point. This is the this is sent every, if you okay. haven't got a central aim, then there's no point to a group. And this is what always happens with a group because the aims get subverted. For instance, with Occupy, it was originally about the financial system, and then the money went in. The change agents took over, and it was all about climate change. <laughs> and so that, yeah. that that's that, that's basically the way it was subverted. Now the point is that nobody within that group said get out of here. You're not coming in. They just let themselves be taken over. And as the Soviets um, said, Yuri Bezmenov, the the host population have to be willingly subverted. You can't subvert a population that doesn't accept it. He gives an example of the Japanese who just who just fought everyone who came to try and invade them. And they, they kept their own purity, they kept their own um, culture basically through that. And you can also use the example, well, a good example of how this was subverted. If you go like the, in Nepal, the Gurkha tribe, they just chopped the British to pieces, even though the British were, were shooting them. They just relentlessly um, attacked them. And the British said at some point, they gave in basically. But what the British is said, work for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. right. So that's the thing. That it was the move the British Army did. Well, years, absolutely. So, the, what yeah. are you suggesting? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm suggesting that if, unless a group has a central aim, mm. then it will be subverted. Because if you, if you say, well, our, our agenda, what we're going to do is we're going to aim to stop, say, this bypass. That's the central aim of the group. And anything outside that is of no use. Yeah. Any side issues will not be accepted. Well, not even Everything has relevant. to Checking go. Yeah, because yeah. this is what happens. Side issues are brought in to divide and rule. And once you realise how this works, it's just a template. And it kind of... The eureka moment was that Occupy thing when I just thought, this is unbelievable how they've done it. They've just... They've subverted it and they stole the money. Very oh, clever, right? Yeah, right? Very clever. You know... So maybe, if you take that to its logical conclusion then, so the, it's individuals, individuals, perhaps the whole thing is not to take group action then. That's it's, right. It's for individuals to come to their own uh, understanding of what's going Individual on. collectivism. Yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. I call it, right? Oh, that's no, yeah. that's, that's Because I'm quite cooperative, really, I mean, yeah. with a lot of this stuff. Mm. But... I've never liked. I've never been really into groups no, because they don't no, seem they to don't work. work. They never work, they right? Never work. So this idea that the the people who who know about this mm -hmm. psychology, they'll say yes, but we've all got to come together and do it. No, no. you've all got to come together and do what we want because that that's what that's what that's we're coming what together will be about. That's, that's, again, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. Frankfurt School, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Well, right. Can we yeah. say? I mean, you know, one of the aims uh, uh, regarding the powers, as I call them, powers that shouldn't be, is already to divide us. Mm. to break the family unit to break the tribal system so we don't have a community um, and you know if you are suggesting that perhaps um, as you view it you know perhaps that one of the best forms of action is as, what did you call it individual collectivism, individual collectivism. <laughs> but, okay. it, yeah. how would one go about taking action right well what the thing is that let's have a look at a couple of things I talked about in the show I was extremely concerned about my friend being put on Crime Stoppers as a most wanted criminal and then put into newspapers as a most wanted criminal when she wasn't wanted. Now I couldn't get any resolution to that through the normal channels because they won't listen to you. What I did was I went to the top, I went to someone who actually had responsibilities 
public responsibilities as a trustee and yeah. told him exactly yeah. what was yeah. happening. Yeah. And he th and even if he turned around and said, oh my God, they're going to sue me. Yeah. Or he said, that's totally wrong, is irrelevant. The actual result was that it all got taken down. The other thing is with the council thing, I mean, that, where your, your question is about collectivism. What I'm saying is that you have to have an individual aim, but the idea is that I put this out collectively, yeah? So I put it out so people can use the information. That's my view of doing it. I think people should take these things on, um, basically on their own, um, and then you, you, can, you, can, you can have group action, but that's a very dodgy thing to do because I've seen this time and time again that the person turns up who's the complete sociopath who takes it over mm -hmm. and everyone just lets them. That's the very weird thing, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about, we were talking about this the other night, weren't we, about these, um, the, the giants and all that sort of stuff and the, 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 the idea of this genetic modification that's gone on with Homo sapiens sapiens which seems to make them very compliant. I mean, even if they, they seem to be very kind of um, determined, it, they're still very easy to subvert. Whereas if you look at the idea of the, the certain, yeah, you're going to get certain people, certain tribes that we're talking about here, like say the Gurkhas and that originally, they just, they just fought incessantly nobody could nobody could take them over it was impossible same with the japanese the samurai and, and you've got these 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 groups that were like that i'm not you know i'm not saying good or bad what i'm saying is that the point is that you can you can act collectively if you've got a, a single goal but that goal has to be so clearly defined that it cannot be interrupted and that I, I I would say that every single group I've been in has been like that. But mm, the thing is that you can work with people. Yeah, I, yeah. I think people should work behind the scenes. That's my idea of it, is that you don't do things in public. We talk about this stuff in public, but uh, if I'm strategizing, strategizing well, about Well, some something, campaigns have to be public, though. Yes, well, a campaign can be public, well, yes, but I'm talking about, about the strategy. There's many things to do. If, it, yeah, the, yeah. the strategy of something, once it's known, can be interrupted. So you don't... Basically, you don't tell people what you're doing. Um, you can have a group that, that can work together for something. But yeah, my view is that groups don't work because they, whenever a big group has come along, and it's happened a lot, especially with this Freeman thing when that started up, you've got these people who got up there, and all of a sudden, like they, you know, people are getting chucked in prison for not paying the council tax when they don't have to be, or they're getting the houses taken when it's totally unnecessary. And there's a small group that I was involved with who kind of worked behind the scenes, but obviously in public when they went to court. But that their website was totally infiltrated all the time. And unless people could show a backstory of where they'd come from and, and had a case history with what they were dealing with, with these, with these administrative courts, then they were kicked off. And that's the thing. The vetting system has to be very good. For instance, if you want to join a really good private members club or an organisation, you have to have two or three references, and they look right into your past and say, "Are you are you a fit and proper person for, for to be allowed in here?" And three other people will have to go, "Yes, they are," and and that really cuts things down because not many people will want to uh, introduce you to something unless they're a hundred percent sure about you. So, but this is the way. In a way, it's, it's interesting because you get to think about the so-called secret societies. Well, skull and bones work that way. Well, yeah, but, they? no, but they're not. <laughs> Yeah. But these secret societies aren't secret because you know about them. So how can yeah, they be secret? Yeah. So mm. the point is that the, this, I always go back to things like the Rosicrucians because whatever that was, it was a fantastic publicity stunt. It was one mm. of the best publicity stunts ever. And it was done in 1610. This, this document appeared that was meant to be written 100 years <laughs> earlier <laughs> and by R.C. Christian, the father. And, and they kept their plans um, concealed for a hundred years and each of them had to find out a successor for themselves and they, apply, they said we are looking for brethren girls as well obviously to apply right um, and you applied but nobody knew who was a member of it because they didn't publish a members list so mm. you could be talking to one and, they, and it's a bit like the secret services yeah, 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 even yeah, though yeah. they're totally inept they just right? tap you on the shoulder I mean they just kind of they decide who they want and tap you on the shoulder and say perhaps you'd like to join mm. them. Yeah. yeah well it, it's, it yeah. was a kind of mythical thing mm. and people are still talking about it to this day as though there was some great mystery behind it and there wasn't mm. 
it was they were very um, esoteric in the way they thought yeah. and they were they, but what was interesting about it is that it's kind of the the the, the language is very floral it's it's all very engaging and it's allegorical so an allegory is just something that is very hard to understand but has a basic uh, premise you know mm. and it can be applied to lots of different things so once you start getting to that sort of it, sort of thinking people think it's magical it's not it's just obtuse mm. right mm -hmm. because uh, the the idea to affect something I've only ever been able to affect something by being very strongly intentioned but that doesn't mean that it's like an ego thing it's like it's like a necessity for it to be done yeah. so in other words if something's absolutely necessary it's done I've got into some really different uh, difficult situations and scrapes over the past couple of years and and I I've, I've not been while I've been doing these things I've not been in a position of I'm supremely confident and I'm powerful. I'm just saying it's got to work, and I'm, even if you're exhausted with it, you know it's. So there's there's a kind of thing here that's that I'm trying to get across, which may be not very clear. It's about that this this idea of, of people just having intention often comes from an egotistical thing, but there has to be a real need for it. It has to be something that it's it's like on a much bigger scale. It's hard to hard to explain that without saying spiritual but it is really it's like um it's 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 an actual you are able to affect change <laughs> no, change oh my god i'm a change oh, agent oh no i've admitted it you're able to affect change by this sort of intention and that and it's about necessity really mm. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's survival I yeah mean, it's yeah survival. something like that it, yeah. it's, it's some kind of survival thing because you know you know you know if we if we're if, if humanity is hurtling towards this technocratic, you know, sort of crazy priesthood that that deem themselves to be, you know, in charge of our planet and, and want to be in charge of all human beings and, and, and herd us like cattle into this railroad, us into this dystopian future, then you, you, you feel compelled to do something about it and you've got to. Otherwise, you just don't have any choice. Well, this is the opposite of what I've just said, right? Listen to this. This is, this is global government. This is Chapter 28 of Agenda 21. Each local authority should enter into a dialogue with its citizens. In other words, control the narrative. <laughs> local organisations and private enterprises. So we're going to choose you, we're choosing you, we're choosing you, because yeah. you're going to go along with what we yeah, want to formulate a local Agenda 21. <laughs> Through consultation and consensus building, consensus. local authorities would learn from citizens, learn... Learn. learn from citizens <laughs> basically learn the body, monitor learn the what's going on so. give them <laughs> on the surface it's what they want yeah. but it's not what they want this, yeah. this is the way it works so, and from local civic community businesses and industrial organisations and acquire the information needed for formulating the best strategies oh there it is at the end in yeah. other words it's it's basically a psychological operation <laughs> formulating the best strategies <laughs> I mean, it should say for subversion, but they've left that bit out. I mean, what, what is amazing about Agenda 21, and, and particularly the, the goals for the for Agenda 2030, is that yes. they've been goals. It's almost yeah. like um, you know, oh, yeah. the, the NLP hypnotic language they use. So, Vibrant. Uh, yeah, vibrant. It's just happy speech, but there is an yeah. agenda there somewhere. Yeah, yeah it's almost yeah. like hypnotic language they use. Diverse so and sustain a vibrant, mm. diverse and sustainable yeah. music. Here's Ian Terry, we're going to have a bit of a break. To rock and believe, rock that rolling stone. My baby, she's gone. A rock and really rocking, everybody stopping tonight. Tennessee rocking, Tennessee rolling, Tennessee stopping.
can be the rocky and everybody's stomach tonight. Tennessee rocking, when the Tennessee rolling, and the Tennessee stomping, and the Tennessee rocking. Tennessee rocking, and the Tennessee rolling, and the Tennessee stomping, and the Tennessee rock. And the South gonna rise again Grab your baby no van A rock and really rockin' Everybody's stomping tonight Tennessee rockin' And the Tennessee rollin' And the Tennessee stomping And the Tennessee rockin' And the Tennessee rockin' And the Tennessee rollin' And the Tennessee stomping And the Tennessee rockin' Welcome back to Windows on the World. That's Ian Hound Dog Terry. We're here with Piers Corbin and, of course, Sandy Adams and our special guest, Aria, who we met yesterday in the King Arthur in Glastonbury. <laughs> yes, it's a good old rocking venue, the King Arthur. Who's on down there tonight, Sandy? 
Uh, do you know, Sunday, uh, we haven't got anyone playing tonight, actually. Really? Uh, we, I think we have what? a bit of a rest. Sunday There's so much live Sunday music rest. around here, I think yeah. it's brilliant, because yeah. it's a very small place, and you've got all of these pubs with live music ah, in. It's a giant now, place. if you go to uh, Land of the Giants, mm, however, possibly, 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 we don't know, mm, it's all conjecture. <laughs> it could be a book, you know, could, you could write a book on it. Could be a, a book, few, could be a play. If you have a few weeks could off. Could be a film, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no weeks off, no time, <laughs> on with the struggle, physics... Maths, consciousness, consciousness yeah. and physics, maths, consciousness, and 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 fighting social cleansing. Absolutely, and they all go together, really, don't they? They, they do. do. They do. They're all part Can of the I same just thing. have a little yeah. bit of a plug for the King Arthur next weekend? Yes. We've got um, a, a, an amazing oh, three-day event for um, Children's World. Lots and lots of music down at the King Arthur. Um, in and it's called not the Glastonbury Festival. This this is not the Glastonbury Festival. We had to actually get that cleared by Michael Evis because he's very, uh, very careful that we don't use the Glastonbury Festival, um, you know, logo, brand, whatever. He well, he wouldn't really want ninety thousand people turning up at the well, Arthur. No, I really wouldn't <laughs> want that. No. So we had to call it. This is not. We actually wanted to call it not the Glastonbury Festival. But we had to change it to this is not a Glastonbury Festival. Anyway. It's going to be um, yeah three days of, uh, from Friday to Monday because it's a bank holiday with uh, rocking music, fantastic. That's yeah. right. Well, great. you've got um, a bit of band that I saw probably about thirty years ago called Here and Now playing as well. Yeah, is it the original lot? They're playing on the thirtieth. Yeah, it's the original lot. Yeah, so um, a wonderful promoter we have called Paul Woodwright who is fantastic, and he organises Cosfest down 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 west. He does the Cosfest festival and he. He, he's uh, here and now one of the bands that he, he promotes. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I saw them years and years ago. I was very yeah. surprised to see that on the list. But it's great the way people keep cropping up. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I've been doing some gigs with Ian Terry, who we play quite a bit on here. <laughs> and it's fascinating that all these old bands from the 60s are still alive and yeah. kicking. Yeah, oh, they're, they're rocking on. Yeah, a lot of them are. <laughs> yes, I know, it's, it's quite incredible. I mean, I did some gigs last year, it'd be like Marty Wilde and the Mersey Beats, and they're still going strong, you know. Yeah. Quite amazing. Too old to rock and roll, never. Never, ever. What do you think, <laughs> Piers? Is it, is it, it's Are not really you your thing, is it? Uh, rocking and roll. Look, look here, I, I knew Joe Strummer. You shared a house with the Clash, didn't you? No, they were next door. Oh, were they? they were part of Mady who was squatted. Well, you thought they were in the same house because of the noise. No, well, well, sometimes, but they were good. <laughs> they <laughs> built, they helped us build a fighting community there yeah. in Mader Hill, which is the upper end of Mader Vale, near Westbourne Park in London West Nine, where, as some people know, we had 250 squatters and we forced the GLC to rehouse every one of us Whoa, after we built fantastic. barricades. And subsequent to that, in the next two years, because we had mounted such a huge campaign on bringing their empty properties into use, the GLC gave tenancies to 10,000 squats. This is quite amazing wow. actually, and coincidence-tastic, because I was on um, Glastonbury High Street today, and an old colleague of yours ah, from indeed, the squatting days indeed. in Maida Vale, was there and we made a hill, if you don't made it all right made a hill made a veil okay you've you've, you've been very pedantic made a mistake here. <laughs> yeah <laughs> made a mistake well there was a post office in, it was called made a hill sub post office i used right? to live in that area piers you know i mean <laughs> okay. we went round there all right man, film, okay, man you know listen yeah. man you Peace know man, if, yeah. if you if you listen i wasn't listen man, man, listen, man if you if you <laughs> listen man if you remember the 60s you weren't there well i wasn't and i can there you go but uh that was the 70s anyway wasn't it but uh, yeah, that was a, that was a good show we did actually. It's uh, squatters versus social cleansing, and we went down there, and it's still relevant today. But this whole idea of squatting has kind of changed, doesn't it? Because we were talking yesterday about sort of government organised squats. Now you know everything's become post truth, hasn't it? Well, yeah. Squat, what do you mean by being that? made illegal? We uh, talked about a uh, fake squat that was set yeah, in the city of yeah. London. Yeah. Um, it basically was set up to mm, divert away from the squat. Occupy movement. Uh, this is, this is, you can look at it up, it's called Inside Occupy and the Bank of Ideas and we did two other films called The Puppet Masters of Occupy and we exposed who'd taken it over and if you look at it, it's informative because it will resonate with people who go to council meetings or indeed any type of, type of public meeting, you know. Mm. Absolutely, uh, Sandy was just asking yes. what uh, is squatting legal or not. Um, Squatting in residential properties is now technically not legal. It's been the laws changed. Oh. Um, 
Uh, but they still have to go for a process to get people out of of uh, residential properties. It was a very fast process, basically, to bring the police round. However, if you're occupying, as opposed to squatting, if you like, or in occupation of a non-residential property, they have to go through a much slower process. Oh, so, so basically, okay. you can squat in commercial buildings. Offices and stuff. Yeah. Um, you may or may not be sleeping there in protest, but you're not actually living there. Um, and this is worked so is this very a, well. So just to interrupt, so this is just a, um, a difference of linguistics again? Well, yes, but if you do go into a normal residential house, like we used to, and take them over, the police will come round shortly and remove you. But now, if you're whereas 20 years ago, and they didn't, they didn't, they couldn't do that. They'd take you to court under County Court Order 26 or High Court Order 113 and have you removed. Obviously, there's court cases, arguments and resistance and so forth. Um, and, and now, of course, you can have court cases, arguments and resistance, but they're generally speaking centred around commercial o occupations. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. Very and good bit of information. Can be very sensitive, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, OK, you had another question too, sir. Well, we're full of questions, but we're, <laughs> really the thing is, Piers, we're here to give some answers. Oh, uh, right. Okay. And that's the important mm. thing. So that's what we do in our talks. And if anybody wants us to do any talks up and down the country, please do let us know through the website. You can find information about what we do there. And uh, indeed, every week, we're having a little bit of an easygoing round table. Uh, round table? Round table. 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 We should have a little summary of each of the talks, maybe, and, and what was said. Yes, yeah. Piers, I was going to ask you, oh, okay. what was your impression be of my talk? Because we do radio shows very often together and our information crosses over what was your impression because you've never heard the post-truth world and the bigger picture well I have to say of course it was dynamic and dramatic and very helpful and so forth but you know speaking practically I think mm. the important thing that what you did it was very entertaining what you said and I would recommend people actually see the video um, and Mark this time I think it's important to understand that See, a lot of people still out there, they think, oh, these, there goes Windows, Corbyn and all these others, and they're going on about conspiracy theories, right? Now, I think we've got to the point where you've actually got across, along with Sandy, across the fact that it's not a conspiracy theory. There is a clear plan by certain people in the United Nations and the European Union to, you know, put forward a certain way in which the world should go. It doesn't mean it's going to go that way, but it means certain forces are essentially copying aspects of the plan in order to and, and implementing it but I would say that there are various action plans around the world I mean it, 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 we have this United Nations EU Uni uh, European Union agenda 21 agenda 30 and and, and it, it is adopted in large parts and, and followed by many governments um, but nevertheless you have to ask a question well okay but is this really the answer of the whole world I mean and is that what they intend because who's behind these these, these plans what in whose interest is it now we have I would say the Wall Street super corporations and the super rich they really love this agenda 21 mm -hmm. stuff um, it's, they're not going to live in in getting these <laughs> little boxes in cities and, and so on they're going to benefit from it and the point is that they will be able to make super profits by having um, you know, the, the, the giving super corporations the freedom to uh, offer services and and, and, uh, and exploit, and, and as you know, that um, uh, George Soros and, and uh, Richard Branson make loads of money by, by the opportunities offered by these sort of plans. Um, so that's about what Wall Street and you know the main economic force in the world, i.e., the US of A, Wall Street. Think. However, there are now bigger economic forces, and, and they're probably not interested in, or other economic forces, probably not that interested in Agenda 21. I mean, it, uh, the Chinese have a whole other agenda for the world, which is their um, one belt, one road type of thing, which does involve uh, development. Well, they still uh, impose these policies in oh, some of ways, course, don't they? In, because in, they're in high housing, the high density housing, where 
the yes, that, that but, company uh, who you were. Yeah, but I've just been to talking China, to, and yeah. the social housing there, or you could yeah. call it their version of council housing, is mm. is not as dense as the stuff being imposed on on London Prison, which is which is pleasing. Now, there's many sort issues otherwise. Now, Russia again, of course, is going to have some some other uh, other uh, uh, agendas who may be you know trying to impose stuff or, or whatever but but the point i'm making is that people shouldn't start rushing around saying oh yeah yes we're all going to be imposed on by agenda 21 now, that is the aim of certain well, i don't people. think that's there's really many the, the, many opposition the crux around. of it was no, about it's no, it about wasn't. it sort of explain and, how it's you explain that that's yeah. the point that's yeah. the point you yeah. you've got to cross now that there is uh, it's not just something imposed but there is ideas there yeah. and it's not actually a conspiracy at all. It's, it's a practical plan out there, and we have to just see what is going on and act upon it. Yeah, I think also giving the examples of the reactions of these councillors and these useful idiots is very helpful to the public Absolutely. because and it very shows amazing that they have no idea what the thing's really about, which is why they're called useful idiots. They're put at the front to impose it, and I read out some examples of that. So I think it's important when we look at this stuff like you know people go oh there's a great youtube video on this and i started looking at the 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 videos that were put out about people who it was being imposed upon in especially in california and there's a lady called deborah tavares there right. and her and her husband are property developers and they not huge property developers but they had some properties and they started to see how it was being rolled out and deborah then got into this much bigger picture and uh, what I try and do is make it so that it's because this is a global local thing so make it just local my, my question to you really was that do you think there's too much information in there or do you think it was it was enough or clear I just wanted to get your view sure, on it. no I don't think there was too much information because you gave quite a lot of practical examples of what happens on the ground yeah. and the similarity between different parts of the world on, on what happens when some developer turns up to improve the area, so-called, it's stunningly similar. Yeah. And, and then basically, well, they could be copying an agenda or they could be learning from each other. Who cares? But, you know, by looking on one area, we can learn how to fight back in another. I think it's a compartmentalisation because you get the architects and the PR companies. They're all working kind of separately. They've all got their own little job to do. So they mm -hmm. probably don't put the bigger picture together. It was interesting, went to um, a consultation with an architect's company in Croydon. And, you know, they, they, these weren't these sort of oligarchs and kind of greedy developers. Yeah, they were just people doing a job. Mm -hmm. So they were very honest about what they were doing. Yeah. And the, the architect said, well, we have to do this, these plans. They, they, yeah, they want certain things now with the sustainable development thing. Because they're not aware of the bigger picture, obviously. They're, they're no. doing their job. That's but even if they were aware, they'd they still do the public the job, they because would. otherwise they'd lose the job. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, I met uh, engineers who were designing these, the, the way that these steel structures are going up. They're going up fantastically fast, and they've got this computerised design, and they draw all the girders and all that, and the instructions on what has to be done mm -hmm. where. And, you know... What was done would take a hundred people two weeks. Is now done by one person in a day. Yeah, you, you, you know. Yeah. And those buildings are going up at fantastic oh, rates. Huge rate, and, yeah. You know, the the fact it's planned for the result of some of those buildings will be they're half empty just for money launderers mm -hmm. who to keep empty and burn money, well not earn, steal money by rising property mm -hmm. values. The, the, some of the guys that are designing this and working on know that, but they say, well, okay, yes, but you know, it's, it's a job, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. It's pity people aren't more conscious of jobs and bad jobs, mm. and, uh, and some of them do change their jobs like, like you did, Sandy, because mm. of what you saw. But uh, possibly yeah. not enough do it. But you know, we have to. People have to have alternatives to do things. Things if bad things are forced upon them, exactly, or made, or yeah. they're made to do bad things. Yeah, and I think you know, you know, you're talking about you know what action can you take. I mean, I, I was. Uh, when I when I when I was talking yesterday um, about the five G five 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 G the fifth generation um, connectivity mobile phone co connectivity is is, um, is is a big issue and the state of Hawaii and actually the smart city agenda can't be brought in unless five G is brought in right that and, is and that very a, important that's a key thing and in Hawaii the the um, uh, in the state of Hawaii. Um, where smart meters were, were, were being implemented, and, uh, not smart meters, 5G was being implemented, 
the, the, a lot of the people in Hawaii collectively got together and threatened to charge every person who installed a meter, um, you know, with with liability for any health problems any residents may suffer right. because the, the the transmitters for 5g oh, that's quite, great quite mm. you know they're, they're, they're very powerful well, we should do that here yeah, yeah and yeah. and you know and apparently 180 scientists started a petition to warn the of the dangers of 5g in hawaii so you know may, we can do things you know because they can't actually put the infrastructure for the internet of things in without 5g 6g 7g 8g right up to 10g they've got planned what? which is yeah it's going to go on and on and on imagine um, the radiation from that exactly exactly this is this is a this is possibly a depopulation well, we'd well have brain as well. cancer yeah. we thought by the time because we're 30. it's it's yeah it's a not it's it's something that is is clearly it's not for it's not for the benefit of human beings it's for the benefit of machines to talk to machines and it's a serious AI agenda. Mm, mm. So I, you know, we can, you know, we can do something about it. If we, if every person tore down a transmitter on a in a smart <laughs> city on a, a new LED, LED lamppost, which they're planning for Bristol, we can, you know, we can definitely have some sort of action here. And do we know what Indeed. cities or towns are the? You said Bristol was a Bristol. yeah, yeah. Bristol, London, Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow, um, Berlin. Is it the whole of London or part of London? It's the whole of London, I believe. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, the whole of London. And and they've got mega cities, you know, they've got huge mega cities, Dubai, huge, big mega cities that are being built as well. They've got Smart City Malta, you know, all the way through Europe. Oh, it's, it, when you look at every country, any po possible country you can think of, it, yeah. is, it is there. Now, your point about to what degree was very interesting yeah. because it, it's it's it's. The, the, the sign of the sovereignty of the country is that how much they implement but it's mm. general mm -hmm. it's generally embedded because the people who attend the habitat conferences are just people who will go there as representatives mm. and as I said yesterday when you look at the habitat videos on YouTube they've got about 30 or 40 views so this yeah, is the yeah, really yeah. weird thing mm. you've got something that affects directly people's lives and they have no idea yeah. that what it is and that is the key to it all because it's ignorance of the law again if, if you're ignorant of something there's no excuse mm. well it is out there you just don't know about it and that's what I've always found interesting about this sort of information is to is to put the pieces together behind the scenes and find out what's going on it's almost like a bit of detective work really but what once you get into it because you you're putting together timelines you're putting together the whole thing with this it's quite easy because it's all public domain stuff but that's that's the part of what I I find keeps me going with these shows because I want to find out how things are working and who's doing it and there's the kind of eureka moment you get oh that company's linked into that one mm -hmm. oh that managing director of that one works for them mm -hmm. oh he's the one who works for the council and and it's like even when I found these websites that were giving us a bit of abuse when we were on the people's voice I found out oh it's his is it all right and that links into them <laughs> that links into them that links into them it's a spider's web of subversion on a global <laughs> scale oh, you know yeah. uh, now yeah. you're being a conspiracy theorist again Mr. Window I'm just like it's, it up it's, here, it's, it's, it's a fact yeah I mean it is a fact well it's, it, I'm glad you say it's a fact it's, you know, yeah, it's not yeah, conspiracy yeah. theory you know no it's not this, this, you know listen you see, see the it's point like, is that whenever <laughs> somebody on the other side says oh that's a conspiracy theory what it means is they realise you're speaking the truth and they don't have an answer. A conspiracy theory. It's just another is, put down. It's a, well, the, 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 what no, the you terminology that conspiracy theory was kind of. Uh, Came out of the Warren Commission, yeah. 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 And um, basically now it just means investigative journalist. <laughs> <laughs> you need the translation. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, put that down. There are many people in the world now that think the murder of JFK was just a sort of a little accident. You know, it was. Mm. Something that was clearly planned by the deep state. That, that's what I would say, clearly planned. But but you know, then there was all sorts of people like who believe this now were accused of being a conspiracy. Theory. Oh yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, of other there's still a huge amount of people who go on about that all the time. I think that's another point though, because when you start looking into this stuff, you can get hooked on certain things, mm. and then that's almost as bad as not knowing about it, because you get hooked on things that are that in the are in the big picture no longer important. I'm not saying that assassination of him was not important. I'm saying it's 
there's, there's other things that surpass it. It's a little bit like the 9-11 thing about arguing, um, you know, oh, was the thermite in it? Uh, were the mini nukes? Or, or was it this or was it that? I mean, that doesn't really matter. It was the intention and the agenda that came from it. The endless war on terror. There will always be an enemy. And it does not have to actually be defined. We don't really have to know what it is even because they can just make something up, make another organisation up. That's the whole point of it. And when you look back, in history that's, that's pretty much how it's all, all been done because what they do is they create groups it's a bit like um, when Israel attacks Palestine they'll be, well, that's, that's, I'll say that they are doing that because it was Palestine and it was the British who formed Israel basically you know 1948 mm. the point is that the Israelis turn around it's Hamas mm. you know so they, they, they blame it on this group which is meant to be a terror group which is clearly a set up operation mm. in the first place. Absolutely. So it's basically a straw man. You're just putting a straw man there for people to attack. Yeah, that's and that's man, a yeah. really, really important mm. point because that's just warfare strategy, you know. Mm. And then when you get it coming from, you've got the, the British Army doing it on Facebook, the whole thing becomes rather comedic. It's mm. like in the talk when I say about the army interview and the fella goes, he goes, there's an army magazine. He goes, so is this a psychologi psychological operation against the public? And goes, well, no, and... Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? it's a typical MOD answer. Because I said, yeah. a friend of mine works for Ministry of Defence, right? He's, he's, a, he's basically a civil servant, retired civil servant, and he goes, "That is a typical MOD answer. No and yes." No and yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that I mean, perpetual war keep everybody in fear. Perpetual, you know, war and conflict. You know, even 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 the whole politics of the right right wing left wing it's the same bird now you know yeah it it's, it's a what question of labels is. yeah it? it's yeah, labels yeah, it's, and people yeah. it's keeping people fighting keeping people at each other's throats yeah, yeah it's the kind of strategy to see through it already isn't it it's like it's like with your brother you know mm -hmm. i mean there's people i speak to oh god not those old lefties you know so, yeah but ironically that is now the antidote to what's going on. Yeah. It's, it, that you, they, they're not able to be flexible within the thing. And that's the whole yeah. point, isn't it? It's like in, in warfare, you have to be flexible. Mm. Or it's, What do you mean it's warfare? You're so negative, Windows. You're always... <laughs> no, 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 something, no, no. It's, all, you're, it's always negative, isn't it? Yeah. It's always that, oh, there's an enemy, Mark. You know, <laughs> oh, have, God, you know. And then they have to confuse things. Yeah. And now, now, now your brother's an anti semite I mean, all well, that Well, that is rubbish. so ridiculous. You know, that. honestly, it's, it is. It's getting everyone... He's, at each other's throats. And he's never discriminated against Jews ever, and exactly. he's got plenty of Jewish friends. As, as have yeah. I, you, you, yeah. you know, and I've, I've employed Jewish yeah. people, for example. I, I mean, it is just complete absurdity. Absolutely. But those labels, there's a lot of labels used, left, mm. right, and anti semitic yeah. whatever. A white supremacist. Are, are used. <laughs> <or> <laughs> this is where the, you know, we've. we've or a denier, a denier of something, are used to yeah. shut down yeah. debate on, on practical issues. Absolutely. And, and I would urge people not to suddenly march say, I am a whatever they are. Identity not. politics. Don't do Identity that. Politics. Go to any meeting and say, oh, get, what are we talking about? And what are we going to do? And how are we going to mm. achieve it? And if someone says, we're not going to work with you because you, 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 you don't like the same cheese as me. Okay, well, just calm down. Let's forget about yeah. cheese. Yeah. And... Exactly. Work yeah. on Work the together. issues. It's the common ground thing, isn't with it? It's like people on the break things up, always coming with, as you said yeah. earlier, uh, side issues to divide. Yeah. And those are the sort of police agents. I mean, it's quite funny actually because when I was looking at people's voice, there they get they, they put this thing out. Who does he really work for? Well, I've been self-employed for 25 years. Got out of the bloody tax office. Uh, you know, uh, who do you really ridiculous. Work for? Okay. <laughs> who does he really work for? It's like, well, I don't work for anybody. You know, I, which uh, oil company do you work for? And now, and now, now folks, none, none. I work for no oil company. I'm actually officially <laughs> unemployable, so I can't work for anybody anyway. Unemployable. <laughs> officially. Officially. Officially unemployable. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, every every time I think of going back into normal work it, it frightens me so much I get I get pre-traumatic stress disorder and I have to take a week <laughs> off <yeah. laughs> Mr Corbyn yes let's talk about your talk my talk well it went brilliantly I think oh yes it was good <laughs> and the question answer section at the end there was indeed no I think it well I was very pleased but I think other people should should uh, comment on it but I think the general feedback in Glastonbury and also at, at, at our, um, Merthyr Rising was that there was a lot more 
objective discussion about what I was saying and a very positive response. Um, more positive than I would have expected in, in recent years. So I think the fact that carbon dioxide is not driving changes in climate and that this idea is used by various authorities to increase oil prices, energy prices and justify anything you like in the name of standard sustainability. That fact is, is getting across. And I think it's important that uh, me and others are putting forward, well, OK, um, this is what we're saying, but it doesn't mean you have to throw out everything which is progressive in what you might call the green movement, i.e. we defend nature, we defend biodiversity, we, we don't want, you know, you know uh, poisonous chemicals to, to go around. So, so we're, not, we're not saying these things ought to be done at all, we're just saying do not accept the regimentation and, and the high costs which come from the carbon dioxide false science. Well, this is the thing that's been on the agenda for us for a long time and I've seen some great speakers. It's a real shame though that the best scientists are absolutely marginalised in this. For instance, people like Niels Axel Morner, and we should get him on the show again. It's um, been quite a long time, but we did a show about this managed depopulation of coastal areas. And I said, is there any possibility that sea levels are going to rise to their predicted levels? And he <laughs> said, it's laughable. He said, that wouldn't have even happened at the melting of the glaciers in the last ice age. It just wouldn't happen, right? So, the, so basically, I think people have been primed by these movies. And of course, Al Gore's fantasy movie, um, An Inconvenient Truth. Mm. Um, and basically, it's television training again, mm. you know. This is the thing, and we actually put in a request for a response from the action group at Fairburn in Wales, and the action group is run by the council, clearly, right? Because there's no response. He said, I'll go into court as an expert witness. We had somebody who's very well known who said, well, I can get the properties there underwritten by Lloyds of London. So all of this is nonsense. Oh, that's right? really interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. But the, the thing is that all of this fantasy story is being pushed and the enviro-fascists, which is what they are, mm. are latching onto it. and going, It's like the New York Times saying that, oh, sea levels are going to rise by up to a metre, you know. And the point is, they say, sea levels are really rising. Look at New York Harbour. No, it's sinking because you're built on it. In, and so they, they say, oh, look, according to this gauge in the, in the harbour, um, the, 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 the waters are rising. No, the ground's sinking. And that's another thing that Niels brings up, you know, with these islands, that, that make, uh, these coral really islands. islands that have been overbuilt. Mm. On. Another thing that's really interesting, I don't know whether you know about this, Piers, yeah. is that yeah. sand is disappearing from a lot of these for, it's, it, for basically for building so yeah, they're, they're yeah, taking yeah. sand away from the shorelines oh, of all yes, these places yes, it's yeah. very very weird and it's been taken to places like Dubai where there's loads of building you know yeah 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 no that Which is, is quite weird isn't it you, why would you take sand to a desert you know no that is significant <laughs> yeah. um, there's been a lot of sand taken away and various coastal dredging uh, in the Gulf of Mexico uh, which has meant more erosion anyway mm -hmm. on the seashore uh, disp and of course the, the fact that the Mississippi is dredged all the time means that there's less sediment coming down and being spread to extend the delta. Instead it's dug out and chucked on, on the land and they try and keep the Mississippi where it is and, and not let it flood. Whereas of course for the last hundred thousand years, or probably a million years, it is squished all over the southern USA which is why it's got all that rich farmland. And, but you know they're trying to fix nature where, 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 where it is and that operation on the sand is actually causing problems of erosion and then they blame so-called climate mm. change on this and I think the point Neil Axel Mourner make which don't get adequate publicity in the mainstream media is that the key thing is that the if you look properly at tide gauges all over the world there will be some going up and some going down because land's rising and falling and, and sea currents are changing and that will change levels slightly in different places but when you look at the whole you see there is a slow rate of rise of 
avid sea level, mm -hmm. which has been going on since the end of the last ice age, and it is going on because the sea in the deep depths is warming up very slightly and therefore expanding very slightly. Now the rate of expansion and the rate of rise of average sea level over the world as a whole has not changed before or after the Industrial Revolution. So man's CO2 has contributed completely nothing whatsoever to the rate of sea level rise. Well, that, that little sign there we've got in the background, you've won a prize there. Have I? <laughs> yes. No, well, what am I going to get? Well, you've won. You've oh, won, won an award. I've won. I, you've I won be, an award. I can be re regenerated and socially yeah. cancelled. Okay. Yeah. okay. Survey after survey suggests that your information is correct. Yes, it does. It does. It does. <laughs> Are you talking to me? This is the narrative we get, though, isn't it? There I look at when they say that. Survey <laughs> after survey. Oh, yes. the consensus. There yes, a yes, yes, your, your yes. Information and the, is correct. These mm. fiercely negated social, sorry, what are yours? Conspiracy theories are being put forward again by Windows on the World. Okay. Um, yes, I would urge people if they want to carry on uh, about stuff on climate is that. The Electric Universe conference is coming up soon. You're and, speaking, and right? I am, yeah. and you can find out about that on weatheraction.com. And I'm also speaking at the Levelers Festival, and I believe uh, you are also, Mark. Right, um, good. And there we'll be doing climate, etc. But you know, do come along to those things. There is a conference in Porto in Portugal in September, which is interesting. But I don't know. That's on the Windows on the World website, actually. Absolutely. Do that. Do it, do that it, do these it. are a very, it is very convened by Neil Jackson Warner. To be precise. Yes, Excellent. exactly. Stuff. Influential and qualified bunch of people who are trying to fight the consensus, Good. which is going on. That's right. As I said yesterday, consensus never in the history of world of the world has advanced science. Science is only advanced when consensus is broken. Yes. Wow, that's mm. profound. That's ah, amazing. Profound. <laughs> well, no, no, no. well, it's true that is, you see, because you you have to you have to think outside the box Absolutely. to actually to, achieve to something. Achieve we something. do exactly. And yeah. I have thought outside a number of boxes. Um, do you want to know about some upcoming weather, or do you want to know about the Alton Estate? Here? Let's have a quick oh, Alton Estate yeah. update. Right, Alton Estate update. Um, the struggle goes on. Uh, people are becoming increasingly aware that they have been conned because mm. the council is putting out a narrative that your estate needs regeneration and, and the reason that it needs regeneration because it looks like it's falling down well it look it doesn't it's not falling down at all but the council have been deliberately neglecting repairs um, and the people were given the impression that some buildings have to be knocked down and then they could move back into newer buildings in the same places but the council's regeneration plan or the council and red road developers regeneration plan makes it explicitly crystal clear nobody living in the existing blocks next to the Alton estate or uh, next to um, the the um, the park richmond park will be able to move back there instead those will be for sale and they will double the height of the buildings and probably sell them for a million quid each so getting rid of council tenants now before the actual demolition of anything means that uh, for every one council tenant got rid of the developers will make a extra million pound profit so people are getting to know this the this, there was scheduled a meeting to happen of the Aylesbury regeneration watch on the 20th of June in the usual place um, there and it will now be on the 27th of June but I dare say there will be people around on the 20th of June as well um, and that is in the Dara Centre for those who know or don't know. But if you go on Weather Action or Windows on the World, you will find out more details. And the, what that organisation is, Ellsbury Regeneration Watch. And one point that really kind of shocks people about this is the leader of the council that is doing all this utterly dishonest social cleansing is called Ravi Govindia. Now, he came to England as a Ugandan Asian refugee who was ethnically cleansed from Uganda by Idi Amin and others because he was basically in a, the business class and they didn't like them. And he was welcomed to Britain um, to, you know, live a new life, which he's done. But 
if you think about it, who welcomed in and why? Well, they were actually the people who had a conscience about, you know, mm. uh, you know what imperialism uh, had done and should do and how we should work equally and honestly and build social housing. And the, the, the generation who let him in were the same as the people that designed and built the Alton Estate, which was a prize-winning architectural fantastic place, and it still is. Yet he's here now working with developers to socially cleanse, even though he himself was ethnically cleansed. And I think that is an utter abomination. And I know mm. even people in the Tory party are pretty distressed about this. Mm. And they want to keep the Alton Estate. And if anything needs doing, it's A, the council should do its job, i.e. do repairs and maintenance, and B, parts of it could be refurbished in a reasonable manner. I, I well, yeah, these are just concrete the buildings. So yeah. to avoid it's easy to refurbish them, but what they want is they higher and easy. higher density. They want to treble the density. Yeah. Treble the density was what they want. Yeah. It is an abomination. And this could be the mother of all social cleansing battles. Well, if you want to know more about that, go to last week's show. And we played the audios of our interactions with the councils and they're nothing if not humorous because you've got people telling us to stop recording when we're not recording and asking why we're not recording when we when we ask them why we're not recording when they've told us to turn it off very very strange but uh, that's if last week's show and you'll find that the all the twitter posts are on there on windowsontheworld.net go and have a look at that because it's very very funny and listen to how these people act against the public interest even when they're in a public consultation mm. yes get involved okay let's go over to Piers Corbyn now for the weather yes we're having a little <laughs> weather, weather. <laughs> after after the talking Glaston people said what's going to happen on doomsday sorry no the summer solstice Thursday the 21st oh, yes. of June well the answer to that in our long range forecast and we've got a 75% confidence of this is that the north of England and Scotland will be showery so do not celebrate the solstice there however south England including Stonehenge and should Avebury. and Avebury right. should be dry mostly fine and sunny marvellous so go there Picnic. celebrate the druidism yes and the other piece of weather news is our forecast stays unchanged but I want to plug it again is that end of this month june the 29th give or take a day or so we will have a major tropical storm indeed a hurricane hitting the gulf of mexico likely to distress everybody in new orleans oh and we're about 85 percent confident of this event taking place so watch this space certainly will and do tune in tomorrow night after eight o'clock 8 8 p.m and of course the show will then be available on Spreaker please subscribe to us on Spreaker because we have a lot of people looking on YouTube we don't know how long we're going to be on YouTube we've had two strikes totally unnecessarily and I'm not going to be relying on them for anything so please listen to us on Spreaker subscribe to us on Spreaker we go out on Spreaker get it all on the website and tomorrow night we'll be doing an interview with Raj Mahay whose mother was knocked down on a pedestrian crossing over 30 years ago and it's a fascinating interview and it ties into a lot of the things that we still deal with today a lot of the things that are still a problem with the police have not really changed and we had a great interview and people will find it fascinating and quite disturbing and of course Raj has got a petition he's trying to get this to 100,000 signatures so please sign it this one is important and it's about time that justice was done in this case because what he's been through is pretty abominable and we like to help people who are in trouble and who have had injustice done to them because of course the mainstream media is not interested in that and I'd like to give the last word here to Sandy and Aria because we had a brilliant weekend and you've been wonderful you put three people up from London who came down and you weren't expecting and you've been very good about it 
I was in Windows Towers, of course, which travels around the country of course. Um, <laughs> to secret locations, and this being one of them. Windows but Towers on wheels. On wheels Windows yeah. Towers is... It's a, it's a road show. Well, it's, just, it's Windows Towers is an allegorical <laughs> kind of residence which I broadcast from. So, But it's really London. I've yeah, been there in London. You, you wanted to talk a little bit about the proposed pedestrianisation of Glastonbury High Street as well, didn't you? Well, um, there's, there, there's, I, to be honest, I, there, there were a few uh, things delivered through everybody's door, um, yeah. questionnaires about, you know, what, what uh, and, and, and I think it's, it's, it's this whole thing of ticking boxes and stuff, which is a, is a formula that I think councils use. Absolutely. And, and it's, um, it's about really taking, what they're saying is it's going to take the weight of the traffic off um, the high street and, and, and surrounding roads around Glastonbury and they want to create a, a sort of ring road that links up I think with the A, I can't remember, is it the A361? A bypass? Um, a bypass, oh, yeah. Right. Um, mm. and, um, and, and there's lots and lots of moves to try and uh, but lots of people are saying yes let's pedestrianise the high street which uh, you know I Personally, I mean, I really think that the minute you pedestrianise a high street, you kill, you kill it, um, mm, because mm. Um, the vi the vibrancy disappears, mm, mm. and and also the the the, um, the the business owners in that high street suffer mm. because you've got you, you can only have deliveries at a certain time, and mm. the, definitely, I mean, it, it will it will become like and you can't park with the kids or so or so or, yeah, yeah, or bar yeah. Or all those all those places that were pedestrianised and you know lots of people saying oh yeah it's great because we can be more creative you know I'm not so sure about this and, and the thing is mm. that there is there is this this feeling that the, there's stakeholders behind this who are property developers yeah. who will yeah. benefit from mm -hmm. um, mm. from the from the properties it's almost like a gateway to mm. uh, housing estates they want mm. they want quick mm. access onto uh, certain, you know, development. Find out who's behind yeah. it. I would say. So that's mm. what that's what you know we're intending to do in mm. Glastonbury. But well, you've already got some open squares where people can have fun, be creative, and dance around anyway. Yeah, we do. So I mean, I think, well, you, you don't know, need to so pedestrianise. Like Glastonbury, Glastonbury is so, you know, yeah. Glastonbury is such a uh, you know, it's such a representative of a town that is relatively free, mm. and um, and I feel that there's um, you know, it's just a. It's kind of like um upsurging of a, a sacred site in a certain way, um, you know, energetically, mm. rather than e even just thinking yeah, about Yeah, but that, that's actually, a, it's things. a good point, but yeah. th th there's a really interesting point you made there, because it's it's not even so much about the, whether, th th there are certain places that have, have, have energy points in, yeah, we know this. Now, what seems to happen, though, with this pedestrianisation, it happened in North London, right? You've got a road which looks uh, pretty ordinary, but once they've cut that off, it becomes cut off from everything else. Mm. So nobody goes through it. And the people mm. who live there are basically marooned. Mm. And there's a, it, there's a very dead energy that gets yeah. into the place. Yeah. It, yeah. It's very dull, the whole thing. Mm. And, and it just, it's just as a result of cutting off these arterial routes, mm. which, which are actually quite important. I mean, there's not, not a lot of traffic around. Anyway, there's, not, there's not much traffic yeah. around here yeah. on that road anyway, yeah. is there, really? Yeah. Yeah. I really look forward to um, perhaps assisting you and getting a pamphlet together and yeah. working well, with you they're, 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 I, I, de the I definitely, I picked up a pamphlet in the, in the, in the organic bed shop, because there's a chap who runs a, a padding, I think it's Paddington Farm, has, has started this process of he's gone into it quite deeply I'm not even sure of the route but I'm told it goes around the bottom uh, round the bottom of the tour mm. really? um, so that which is yeah. such a sacred sign well I, yeah I think it's Wick I think it's Wick Lane which is at the bottom of the tour it's around that area mm. so um, I've got to look into it myself because I'm not entirely sure I remember getting the oh, so they go, the are they going to destroy there. farms and houses to do it anyway I would imagine so if it's yeah, going yeah, around yeah, that yeah. route it will be going through farmland yeah mm. Yeah, I mean some some bypasses are good in my opinion, some yeah. are bad, and this one sounds, you know, bad, bad, bad. Mm. But you know, let's let's get to the facts and find out. Well, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna spend some time finding. But it's not a place that you cries out for for, for, for excess traffic. You, you know, yeah. it, 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 it isn't, that isn't the case. Well, that's great. Thanks a lot, Sandy, Thank because you. you've really helped uh, 
the Windows on the World Road Show and the Piers Corbin Experience. Oh yes, it's my, been a pleasure. My experience is <laughs> mounting all the time. Well, that's great. Thanks to Aria for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Been our guide. So much. Such oh. a pleasure. It's been yeah. a really great weekend, and we'll come back here very soon. That's it for tonight's show. We'll see you tomorrow night. Remember that 8 p.m. Do tune into that and tell all your friends to sign the petition, petition on behalf of Raj. And we'll see you soon on Windows on the World. <laughs>